we are going to take a deeper dive into some of the core uh, functionalities of IP and see how we can get the most out of our omic data using public data sets as well. So today we will be going over uh, some uh, in, in detail about some of the core functionalities. So uh, the first half of the training will focus on the upstream analysis feature in IP, uh, which is part of the core and comparison analysis, since a lot of you requested uh, for this particular training. And um, next, we will look at the activity plot, which provides a novel approach to identify key pathways or regulators by exploring its predicted biological activity across thousands of data sets, uh, which uh, represent different disease conditions or drug treatments, et cetera. Next, we will look at analysis match feature to discover public data sets uh, with similar or uh, opposite biological results compared to yours. So this will help you get new insights into your data. Next, we'll perform comparison analysis uh, uh, between two experimental groups to identify key pathways and regulators. Uh, after the first half, we will take a break and we, we, can also, we will also do a live Q&A session uh, halfway through this. And after the break, we'll look at how to search for public projects with an IPA. So this feature takes advantage of the large repository of public data, which our team of scientists have curated and processed over several years. And you can easily search uh, for a project using keywords or GEO accession numbers and perform pathway analysis, identify targets, and so on. Next, we will look at this overlay feature for a pathway or a network. So this feature will allow users to uh, determine the expression profile of the genes uh, within uh, a public data set or even within your own data set. Next, we will look at uh, the land explorer feature. So this will provide you insights about your gene or a target uh, and tell you how it's expressed across different diseases, different treatments, tissue types, etc. And finally, uh, if we have uh, time permits, uh, we will see how to uh, generate a custom network uh, if we are interested in that. So for those of you who are not familiar with IPA, I just wanted to give a brief overview. So IPA is a very powerful tool that can be used to perform analysis and interpretation of different types of omic data. So it allows you to investigate the biological mechanisms uh, underlying a disease pathology or drug treatment. So IPA can also identify biomarkers, key regulators uh, that are associated with your data set. And you can also compare multiple data sets side by side to observe similarities or differences uh, within those experimental conditions. Now, in addition to all of this, uh, you can also generate custom networks um, where you can see how a gene of your interest is connected to a downstream function. So all of this is possible because IPA is driven by its powerful knowledge base uh, that has over 8 million literature-based data points. Uh, and this allows IPA to interpret any type of omic data. Uh, and from there, you can generate uh, all these different visuals that we see on the slides. So today we are going to work with two different differential expression data sets from this published study where ulcerative colitis patients were treated with a vidalizumab drug and its efficacy was determined. So, uh, one, so in one of the data sets, we have the differential expression data coming from intestinal mucosa tissue of uh, disease versus control groups where ulcerative colitis is our uh, disease that we are looking at. For uh, the second data set, we have treatment versus baseline, where ulcerative colitis patients were treated with vidalizumab, uh, which blocks leukocyte trafficking in gut. So let's see how we can leverage IPA to identify relevant upstream regulators, mechanistic networks, and causal networks. So when you open uh, IPA uh, on the left-hand side, we have our project manager uh, window. So this is the place where you'll find any of your data set that you have uploaded and analyzed. So when, once you double click on your analysis, so here in this case, we have ulcerative colitis versus control data, and this will open up the core analysis results for us. 
So today we are going to look at the upstream analysis tab within our core analysis. And here is a table listing individual upstream regulators. And in addition to that, we have um, mechanistic networks and the causal networks tab as well. So let's say users like you are working in an academic group or in biopharma, and you are interested in finding which key regulators are driving a specific pathway. But digging through the literature uh, to find these regulators might take a very long time. But with upstream analysis function in IPA, you can quickly prioritize the top regulators that drive a pathway of your interest. So using the upstream analysis, uh, the uh, analysis tab, you can identify individual upstream regulators that can explain the changes uh, observed in the expression of genes within your data set. With the mechanistic networks, you can interpret deeper insights into how one upstream regulator interact with another upstream regulator and in turn influencing the downstream targets. Finally, the causal network feature allows the users to identify a master regulator and it scores the molecules, uh, diseases and functions against this causal network. So you can therefore uncover hidden connections between your upstream uh, regulators and uh, effect on biological processes as well. So together, uh, the IPA's uh, upstream analysis feature allows you to gain uh, deeper insights into how uh, regulators affect biological process in your research. So let's uh, open up IPA. So when you click on the uh, analysis, this is going to open up the expression analysis window for us. And over here, we are going to go under upstream analysis. Now, under this tab, uh, this table lists the information about individual upstream regulators that affect uh, the genes within your data set. So the first column over here um, contains the name of the upstream regulator. And this table is arranged in such a way that each upstream regulator has its own row. So the upstream regulators in the pathway can be um, a transcription factor, microRNAs, drugs, chemicals, and much more. And the upstream regulators uh, that are most significant by the p-value of overlap are shown at the top of this table. Now to view any regulatory network, um, you simply have to click on one of the rows for a regulator and click on this button for display as network. But before we do that, uh, let's find out what sort of information this table can provide you. So let's take a look at the expression log ratio column here. So if an upstream regulator is present in your data set and has an expression uh, data for it, its full change values will be listed here. So all these regulators with expression log ratio values are coming from your data set. And you can see we have small up arrows and down arrows, green colored and red colored ones. So they tell you uh, whether these genes were uh, up regulated or down regulated in your data set. Now the rest of the regulators uh, that are shown in the table um, that, do, um, that do not have any expression value. So these uh, regulators are coming from IPS knowledge base. And based on uh, the knowledge base, it indicates that uh, these regulators, they target some of the genes within your data set. So let's filter um, this column based on the expression values. So to filter uh, any of these columns, you can simply click on this funnel icon. So here I'm going to type in a log ratio of two that being a full uh, log ratio of one, which is going to be a full change of two. Kyogen. Sample to insight.